In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how to take a title and place it on top of a video, which is a video of water and waves, and make the title move with the waves or other elements of the camera action. This comes as a request from one of my subscribers. So let's start by previewing part of this short clip here. You see the camera comes up from the beach and then looks at the horizon where you see the waves crashing against a rock and others coming in to the beach. Let's assume we want a title to move slightly with the camera action, which will be up and down and left and right slightly. So what I'd like to do is show you the first of two ways you can solve the problem. I'm going to move my time indicator back, not all the way to the beginning, but a little bit to the right where we first see the horizon and we have some room above the wave action. So I'm going to click on my clip on track number one and then choose the tools button above the timeline. From the drop down, we're going to select motion tracker. That will open my motion tracker screen. The default is for it to track in the center of the screen at a certain size. What we want to do now is make the size smaller and we're going to focus on the contrasting color, which in this case will be the gray on that rock. So we're going to move and try to highlight just the gray and hopefully that will give us the enough contrast that we won't lose tracking before the end of the clip. Then I'm going to click on my T on the left side, my title text, and we'll add a title and we'll type in Ocean Wave. And you see it comes to the lower right of my tracker. I'm going to change a couple things about the title. We'll change the font face. And I will make it bold. I will change the color. Let's go to a maroon from my color palette and click on OK. Then I'm going to add a border. I'll click the border box in the lower left corner. And I'll, go, I'll click on the black, which is the default. I'll change it to white and click on OK. And so now I have my title. I'm also going to change the location. I highlight any of the four sides of it. I'll get the double headed arrow and let's make the ocean wave a little closer to on top of my rock. And here we go. So let's click on track and see how the tracker goes. The title disappears. I see the tracker on the screen. Right now it's locked on the rock very good at this point. There may be a risk when the waves come, but right now it's holding steady. And if I look at this, it, it does track all the way to the end of the clip. So I'm happy with that. So I click on OK at the bottom. And then what it does is it takes that title and puts it on a higher numbered track, track two in this case. And we can play it and see how what it looks like. We'll go back to the beginning of the clip and watch the playhead move toward the area where the title begins and it pops in and you see it's moving slightly with the camera locked into the rock and so it gives me a bit of the kind of look I want in terms of the title in this particular situation. Not bad. I'm pretty pleased with that. Let's see what it did and let's look at another method of doing this that oftentimes I find better. So I have my ocean wave here. If I click on it and press the F2 key or double click, you notice we have the what looks like yellow bars. But if we actually stretch out our timeline here, we see that we actually have a keyframe every frame for the entire duration. Now I could delete this and start over with the same title, but I'm going to actually reuse it. So what I want to do is erase all the keyframes. There's no easy way to erase just a few, so I'll, I will make them all go away. I'll right click on the one on the position value and click on remove all and all my position keyframes are gone. I'll right click again and re do remove all and all my scale keyframes are gone and I'll click on OK. Now let me show you another way of doing this. I have a title here just as if I typed it in from the title room. And I could have done that as well. But let's start by setting some keyframes going back to that title. No matter how you create it. Click on the right arrow to the left of the title and 
we're going to set a position keyframe at the beginning. And right now it's just to the right of the rock. I'm okay there. Then I'll drag my playhead to the right and notice the video moved. So I'm going to move my title up and to the right and where it's, where it's at a place I like, it automatically sets a keyframe. I'll click on another location here and we'll keep it pretty much on the, the center of the rock. We'll do another one here. And now it's moved to the right, so we need to adjust it. And you can do as many or as few of these as you want, depending on the movement of the camera in the video to see where you have to make some adjustments. And I'll start with a few to start with, and then we'll see what we have when we finish here. Let's do one near the end. Cameras move way over here. And let's do one more before that. Looks like we need some adjustment here. It's covered with uh, surf. Okay. So that doesn't look too bad. So we'll go to the beginning of our preview screen inside the title designer and click on play. And I like this method because even though you have to set your own keyframes, normally you don't have to set too many. And if you have to make some minor adjustments, like there it went up a little more than I wanted it to, uh, you can always set other keyframes in the process. Not too bad. It gives a little bit of a fluid look to it. And again, if you want to tighten up the keyframe setting, all you do is you stop it and set a keyframe. And then you can make some minor adjustments up, down, left, or right of the title and click OK when you're done. So these are two options. One is kind of a manual method with a handful of keyframes. The other uses the motion tracker to set a keyframe for every frame in your clip. You can use whichever works depending on the nature of the video that you happen to be working with.